After that data processing model, as I already explained, the first part of MIS system will always be some devices which we're going to use to collect the data. Sarah, what is data? Oh, um, data is uh, is any any information that has not been. Um, it's not information actually. It's any. I have forgotten the words for it, but. Um, uh, any facts and, and stats or? All right, very good. Any facts, figures? That has not been processed or, or analyzed, yes. which is yet to be analyzed. Very good. Facts, figures, numbers, or any sort of unprocessed information. So any fact, number, figures, digits, which is not in a meaningful form will be considered as a data. Then we will going to collect all this data. We will going to process it through some specialized software and we will get the output. Output can be the reports. And obviously these reports will be considered as a piece of information. What is information? processed form of data. Data is known as reports or information. So first of all, we will going to get the input. We will going to collect the data. Second, we will process the data. Third, we will going to produce the reports. Last but not the least part is storage. Definitely we need storage whatever data we are going to input, whatever reports we are going to produce, whatever processing we are going to do for everything, we need storage. And there are lots of different methods and ways that we can use to store the data or to process the data. Clear with all this data processing model? Yes, sir. Okay. Next, data processing stages of data input how we can input the data first of all origination of data as far as in the data processing model first we have to look for the input how we can input the data so for any data that we are looking for first of all we need to wait until the data is originated for example at the on the counter we just perform a sale so a sale transaction, when we are going to perform it, this is what origination of data, the data have been produced. Then same for if we are going to purchase something, at the moment when we are going to purchase or we are going to complete the purchase transaction, that will be considered as origination of data. After that second step is transcription of data. Whatever data or whatever transaction we have performed, Next, we need to record it. record it. How we are going to transcript the data or how we can record the data. If there's a sale transaction, immediately we need to produce sales invoice or sale receipt. If it's a purchase transaction, immediately we have to produce the purchase invoice and many other documents like purchase order, uh, sales order and so on. So this is what, whenever we are producing these documents to record our transactions, this step is called transcription of data. And after that, data input. Whatever sales invoice we got, whatever purchase invoices we have, then we will going to input that into our system. How we can input that? There are lots of methods of inputting that. We can, as simple as we can input it with some person and a keyboard, and he will go into input that into a computer software. And we can also have lots of different automated methods. One of the auto automated method can be considered as barcode reader. Clear with this thing? Yes, sir. Any question? None, sir. OK. Next. Data input, now what are the methods that we can use to input the data? First of all, we can use keyboards and VDUs. Sara, what are VDUs? Uh, visual display units, uh, yeah. monitors. In simple words, we can say monitors, very good. So visual display units, 
This is the technical term for the same monitors. So we can use monitor and keyboard to input the data. Then we can also use some automatic input devices. First of all, MICR, Magnetic Ink Character Recognition. This technology is being using in checks because when you are going to see your uh, any any particular check, so when whatever they have printed over the check, they will going to use magnetic ink to record everything or to write everything on the check. Then when you are going to process that check in the bank, so a cashier in the bank, they will going to take your check and they will just going to put it on some particular kind of scanner. And that scanner is going to read all only those characters which are written in magnetic ink. So this is what this is one way of inputting data uh, automatically. Second, OMR or optical mark reading. This is usually what is used in entry test exam papers. If you have seen, if they have given some MCQ, for example, with four options, so they will go into give for each option they will give you blank circle for a b and c and d and so on and then you have to fill up any one of that why because when later on we are going to input it into the ocr or into a specialized mm -hmm. scanner so between these four circles whatever circle or whichever circle is highlighted so that scanner will going to read that automatically so this is what we call optical mark reading that these software these devices will only going to read some markings on the paper this is also very helpful when we have to process um, there are lots of candidates in entry test exam and there, there's a lots of papers uh, we have to check so such kind of um, omrs we can use then scanners it's very uh, common device that if you want to scan something so just we are going to put that paper, that piece of paper on the scanner and scanner automatically will going to take a picture of that. Nowadays, it's not common to use scanners, but instead we are just taking pictures of the documents and we are going mm -hmm. to convert it to a digital form. Then barcodes, these barcode readers are specialized devices, which will going to read barcodes on the products. If you are ever notice that there's a black and white strips on the back of some products. And each of these strips are like this and they are basically unique kind of. So what these uh, strips basically show that they're going to contain some kind of particular information that only barcode readers can read it. Then EFTPOS, electronic funds transfer at the point of sale. Um, I'm sure you have seen a device that whenever you are going to buy some product, on some shop counter. Mm -hmm. So what they're going to do, they are going to take your debit or credit card and they're going to swipe it into a machine. That machine basically is called EFTPOS that at the time of sale, you can easily transfer your funds through credit card or debit card from one bank account to another bank account. Then we have specialized card readers. For example, if you are having debit card or credit cards, <clears throat> So these readers will going to read those cards. First of all, magnetic stripe card. Magnetic stripe card is very common one in back in the back of your debit card. You can see there's a black strip. What that black strip contains, that's a magnetic strip and that contains all the information of your card. So that debit card, when you're going to put it into an ATM machine, so from that black strip, it oh. will going to read out all the information. What are smart cards? Smart card basically are a little different from debit cards or credit card. Smart cards are basically cards with uh, physical chips in it. Mm -hmm. So these cards will going to contain a chip and that chip will going to contain all the information about that card holder. Our, our own ID cards in Pakistan, basically these are the smart cards. And in many countries, the identity cards are nowadays smart cards they carry is basically chips so magnetic stri stripe card like debit or credit card they hold a black line at the back a magnetic black line that holds all the information and smart cards basically hold a physical chip in the card clear with this thing yes sir any question no sir 
Okay. Now there's a one small question. When visiting your local supermarket, the item that you have purchased are scanned by a device at the point of sale, which act as a cash register. So which, what is this device known as? What do you think, Sarah? What do you mean the device acts yeah. as a cash register? Exactly. Barcode. Like like that barcode reader, for example. So it will going to read all the information from that product and they will automatically go into information um, update oh. all the information like it's a cash transaction it will update the cash t account sale t account oh. so. so what so we call that device d-e-p-o-s yes e-p-o-s electronic point of sale because um at the counter at the point of sale it electronically we are going to record all that transaction which will ultimately going to update the cash register, like uh, it will going to record your cash transaction. Very good. Clear with this? Yes, sir. Okay. Next, which of the following are features of graphical user oh. interface? When we talk about computers, mm -hmm. basically computers are divided into two parts. One is hardware, and second is software. So that software portion is basically what we call graphical user interface that graphically uh, in softwares, it will going to present all the information and graphically a user can input all the demands into the computer system. So what can be the part of graphical user interface between these four options? What do you think? Uh, I think it's A, one and four. One and four, yes. Option A is the correct one. Hold down menu and icons, both are part of softwares. Keyboard and optical mark reading. Um, OMR is a physical device and keyboard, obviously. So these both are what? These are the hardwares. These are input devices. Yes, and these are the hardwares. Okay, clear with this? Yes, let me write this down. Okay, okay yes, sir. Next, in the management information system, when we want to store our data, so what options we have? First of all, we can use physical hard drives. Then second, we can use CD-ROMs. Nowadays, it's not very much common to use CD-ROMs, but um, um, in previous time, we were using CD-ROMs and DVDs to write our data in that, even like movies and songs, they were selling everything through CD-ROMs and DVDs. Pen drives or USB <laughs> flash drives, everyone is using nowadays to store their data. And last but not the least, cloud. Cloud basically is a storage service that you can obtain. So some third party company will be going to maintain that service and you will just going to store all your data into their hard drives. And every month you are going to pay some fees for that. Like Amazon is offering this service. Then um, Apple, of course, they are offering it. And what we call it in Apple, it's called iCloud in Apple. Um, Alibaba, basically, they are also offering this service and so on. So these companies basically are offering the cloud services. They are offering you the storage, um, the storage box where you can put all your data um, securely and every month or yearly you have to pay something. There are some other organizations as well, like Dropbox is very common. So they're also okay. offering the, and, and only with the box ones very famous as well. So all these are what applications and companies which we can use to store our data online. What will be the benefit of using cloud? We do not need to buy a physical hard drive. We do not need to protect it. We do not need to keep, keep it safe. All that task will okay. going to be done by the company. We just need to take the data and put it on their servers. So all these costs are going to be eliminated. Clear with this thing, Sarah? Yes, sir. All right. Next, one more question. Which of the following printers can print a whole page at a time? What type of printer? What do you think? Uh, laser printers. Sir. Laser, because these are the most sophisticated and the 
modern printers that we can use. So laser printers, yes, can help us to print all the data. Bubble jet and inkjet, basically they print even inkjet and bubble jet, yes. These basically print line by line or word by word. They cannot print a whole page at the same time. And scanner is not a printer. Clear with this thing? Yes, sir. Okay. After that, data output. First of all, data output, there are two ways to get the output of the data. First, a graphical one, we can use monitors so we can display our data. And second, we can use printer to get the hard form of our information on the page. Now, what we need to do, um, sometime it's better to take print out of the data and sometime we have to take uh, or should not print out, but uh, just to use the soft form of the data and display it on the monitors. How we need to decide that which method we have to use for the output. First of all, we need to ask ourselves, do we really need the hard copy? For example, for some legal documents, for example, it's must to have hard copy. Because if you are processing that legal document for some legal purpose, so maybe soft copy will not be acceptable. So that's why you need to have a hard copy for that. Second, the volume required. If you need to send some email, for example, to 1000 users. So obviously printing will not be a good option, but sending all that information through email to all that 1000 users will be a better option. Third, the speed, how quickly you want to deliver the information. Um, the monitors and through internet, if you are going to process some information, it will be much more faster as compared to the printers. So we need to consider the speed. Suitability, like again, like the legal requirement, if there's a legal requirement to present data in the hard form, so there's no way we can use monitors. And the cost, obviously the cost of displaying data or sharing data in a hard form will be much more costly because there you will going to use a printer, the ink of or cartridge of printer, you will going to use paper and so on. So cost will going to be higher for the printers as compared to if you're going to present it through monitors or through internet. So before printing out a paper or before presenting the information that you need to decide that whether we have to um, present the information in a hard form or soft form, you need to consider all these options. And you only, you should only um, need to print the information on the paper if it's uh, utmost needed. Um, it, otherwise, you always need to prefer to use soft form of the data because that is fast, that is, um, that is easier to uh, communicate as well as it will save costs. Clear with this thing? Yes, sir. Okay. Now the definition of MIS, a management information system is the hardware and software used to drive a database system, which provides useful information to the management. Now again, MIS, most of the time it will be collecting cost transactions, but it's not limited to that. It can also collect the financial transactions as well. So maybe cost or both of it. And then uh, that hardware and software, the collection of both, will going to collect that data, will process that data, and then produce an output. And that output will going to use by managers for planning, controlling, and decision making. Clear with this definition of MIS? Yes. Okay. So here, one more question: Which of the following correctly describe the card reading machine known as MICR? MICR stands for the magnetic magnetic ink, ink corrector recognition. Correct. What do you think? Which option is fine? Uh, let me read the option. One minute. Uh, the the last one. The, uh, the, the recognition of yeah, the recognition by a machine of special formatted characters printed in a magnetic ink. Yes, D is the correct one, like we have in our checks. What about the other options? A, what is, what is this thing? Okay, a device that can read text from the screen printing paper. Um, this is actually basically a scanner, which would yes. be an um, 
the OCR software? The, yes, basically. this is a scanner with the OCR. So they can, OCR basically will going to scan the documents. So in, in an editable form yeah. that we can later yes. on edit it as well. A, sim, with, a scanner without the OCR will going to just take the picture of the document. So yes, it's a scanner. Yeah. How about B? Uh, a device which can sense the marks made by a ballpoint pen. Um, a bit of translate. Using an electron. Oh, this is that one. Um, uh, the OMR, the optical mark. Yes, reader. OMR or optical mark reader. Basically, when we are using ballpoint pen or type line, so these are or cross. These are work. These are the marks. And these marks will going to be read by OMR. And how about C? Uh, that's a barcode. That's a barcode reader. Very good. So all A, B, and C are not the MICR. Only option D is the correct one. Clear with this thing? Yes, sir. 